Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. We're going to build a Mox and Vice, really simple benchtop version using our uh, Cosmonized Mox and Vice kit and these two pieces of maple. Stick with me. Well, in a previous video, we did this Mox and Vice using our Mox and Vice kit at least the hardware. This one is uh, fairly easy to attach. Just hold it in place with a couple of clamps and you're all set. The one we're going to do today, eliminate some of this, at least some of these parts. And again, it's, it's an easy build. We've made a couple of upgrades to our kit we'll introduce you to that actually will make it perform a little bit better. But first, what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about the Mox and Vice and tell you why it's advantageous and you may want to consider it. If your bench is used primarily for hand tool woodworking and you're doing a lot of planing, a lower bench is going to be advantageous. It allows you to lean over top of it and it's just much better uh, situated for planing as opposed to being up here. However, the advantage for planing is somewhat of a disadvantage for sawing, especially if you're tall or if you're getting a little older and you've got back issues, having to lean down there to saw something is not always comfortable, especially if there's a lot of work to be done. A mox and vice allows you to elevate that work as simple as just building something to suit. You can have it four or five, even six inches higher. When you put the piece in the, in the uh, vice, it's now at a very comfortable height for sawing. In fact, almost perfectly suited. And again, you can adjust that to your, to, uh, your liking. The other big advantage is the way that it holds the workpiece. On a traditional vise that have bars underneath, when you clamp down your workpiece, it's always going to pinch on one side, and depending on the width of the board, this end is going to be left flopping in the wind. And there's nothing more terrible than sawing and having that board vibrate. On a moxen vise, and you can tailor it to whatever width you want, you clamp that piece in place, and now it's held firmly across the widths, and there's just nothing nicer than that nice solid feel of sawing something that's being held properly. So I mentioned that we'd made uh, some upgrades to the kit. I want to show you what it is. They're actually quite simple. These two bushings and these are oil impregnated so you leave them there they'll leave an oil ring but they're great for lubricating and this material which is a cork rubber composite it has a self-adhesive back. Now I've used it on this one. First I'll show you where the bushing is and what this does is just extend the life of your jaw because instead of that wearing on the wood it's actually rubbing on that lubricated brass bushing and what it really what it does that you'll appreciate the most is that when you're bringing the vice jaw back and it comes back very smoothly it doesn't bind like it does if it's uh, too closely fit just on a piece of wood and I'll, sh I'll take this off and show you the rubber and cork face. And the big advantage there is the way that it holds the wood so nicely because it has real grip and it protects your workpiece from being damaged. It's easy to change if it wears out, but it's actually quite durable and we haven't had to change this yet. We're gonna keep this real simple. That back jaw, and I'll go ahead and mill this up. We're just going to cut down like this so that we can clamp right here and we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll cut some bevels and chamfers on there to make it a little more user friendly. We've got to cut some holes to accept all the pieces but the next thing I'm going to do is take these two pieces and mill them up. Now this is 10 quarter material which translates it's actually two and a half inches in the rough state but designed to get two and a quarter and I'll mill it down to somewhere between two and two and a quarter depending on what it takes to get rid of some of this wany edge. You don't need it to be that thick, but uh, you can adjust accordingly. So let me get these milled up and then we'll come back and do some of the finer touches on it once it's already been processed. Okay, let's talk about dimensions. As I mentioned, this material is finishing out at two and three eighths. So that's a lot thicker than you really need, but I've got it, so I'm gonna use it. The back piece is pretty simple. It's just going to be square. I'm gonna make the front jaw a little bit lower. In fact, I'm probably going to go in and cut maybe another half an inch off of this. That way, when they're, when they're set up like this, 
and flush on the top, this piece will actually be sitting down lower. So when we put it in place, clamp it onto our bench, that'll act as a catch so that the inside jaw will be flush with the face of our vise and it'll just give you a little more uh, support for your workpiece and it'll make sure you don't end up having it in too far and then it's bumping into your bench when you try to drop a board down. So I'm going to leave, well actually we'll give you some numbers. This piece is four inches. This piece is four and a quarter. I'm just gonna take a quarter of an inch off of this. A half an inch lip will be enough. So I'll take this one down to three and three quarter. This one I'm gonna leave it as it is. That wany edge, I'm going to use that to my advantage and I'll just take that off. I'm gonna put a bevel on the front, something like this. And that just gives your saw some clearance as you're sawing and getting close to the uh, handle. You're not bumping way out here. It just allows you to get in there and work a little bit better. This doesn't matter on the back side. The more surface area we have, the better. And then what we're going to do is go in here, as I mentioned, and we're going to cut away a relief so that we can actually get a clamp on that. Now, it only makes sense that this piece be as long as this inside piece, and you can make these whatever length that you want. So these are just under 22 inches, and I'll leave an inch and a half is enough to grab hold of with a, with a uh, clamp. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to cut an inch and a half chunk out of here. I'll leave about an inch down here in the bottom. Do the same thing on that side, and whatever this dimension is, I'll, I'll cut this one to the same length. So I'm gonna... Okay, there's our two pieces. That's a 30 degree bevel laying down like that, which I think will be enough. The idea is just when you're sawing, it allows you to get in a little bit closer before you start banging into the end of your, or the handle on your saw. Okay, now before I go in and play and clean everything up, we'll go ahead and lay this out for where we're gonna actually cut our holes. Okay, when you empty out your kit, there's your two springs, two threaded rods, there's four washers. These ones go on the back side with the two nuts. These ones go on the front, right underneath here. There's your two oil soaked bushings. And when these little handles, when you put them on, just screw them into that threaded hole. And then to lock them, you can come through the back side and there is an Allen wrench. Pardon me, there's a, it's threaded for an Allen wrench. And you just have to remember it's coming through this way, so tighten that up, and then that'll stay put. And there's your, your cork, rubber cork backing. So I, I, I went and I ran these through the thickness planer, and I brought them down to two inches, just because that's probably closer and more typical of what you're going to have access to. Not everybody has the ability to find 10 quarter maple around. So this one's a little bit longer so that it'll catch on that front edge when we put this in place. Now I decided I'm going to put the handle in such a way that if I decide, if I use this to hold something to plane it, I want to make sure that the top of the handle is below this top surface so I don't end up bumping into that. So I went an inch and five eighths in from both ends. So an inch and five eighths this way and an inch and five eighths in this way. Now I'm going to use an awl to start that. And we want these holes to line up on both pieces. Now I haven't cleaned up the saw marks yet, but what we need to do is remember, we want to line up the front, or the top, not the bottom, and I want to drill a small pilot hole through this piece so that uh, we're able to use larger bits, and you'll see why we need to do that. But I want to go all the way through into this one so that we'll have these marked up exactly instead of trying to, not that you couldn't go in there and mark it with a steel rule and get it right, but this is just as easy. So now when you do this, you want to make sure that you uh, come out frequently to get rid of the shavings that build up in the flutes of the drill, if not, that will contribute to it wandering and not drilling nice and straight. So don't go too fast. OK, 
Okay, that was deep enough that that'll leave me a mark on the bottom side. Now I want to, I need to go down the depth that this is thick, which is three eighths of an inch. Let that center in that pilot hole. Now that's going to be a tight fit, so I'm going to measure it. That's just a little bit below 3 8 so that's actually good. Once I get this lined up, I'm just going to shut the drill press off so I can clamp this so I can pull that uh, shoot. Clamp it with my third hand. And now I can do this multiple times. Okay, that'll go. Okay, I'm going to switch out for the 7 8 the 7 8 is larger than the threaded rod and that will allow it to pivot a little bit. So if you're clamping something that's not, doesn't have parallel faces, it'll still pull up tight. Now we'll just go through, line that up in the, in the last pilot hole. Now we want to have the nut that's going to hold the rod in place on this side. This is going to be the inside of your jaw. Your work's going to be clamped up against this. So some folks would go in and actually mortise this in. Well, I can't see why anybody would do that, the amount of work it's going to take. So I'm just going to use a uh, inch and a quarter bit, which will allow that nut to sit down in there and sit just below the surface. So the last hole is a three quarter. This will be a tight fit with the rods. I want this to be a clean exit hole, so I'm just gonna put another piece of material underneath because that hole's already been enlarged to the point where it won't provide any support. And this is gonna go obviously all the way through. These aren't great at really deep holes, so you have to make sure you clear your shavings frequently. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber-only content, discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So we'll take those threaded rods. Actually, gotta put that nut on first. Threaded rod through. Now, depending on on how much travel you want, and if you don't if you don't have that rod through far enough, this this will actually bang your knuckles quite often. You'll see what I mean. So, I'm going to put that through. Yeah, it's a little more than the thickness of the opposite nut. And let's snug that up. Do the same thing on the other end. Okay, now we can put these on. Then we'll tap these bushings in place. Best to uh, put a block on there so that you can 
engage the entire Now, line these up. We still have to put our cork on, but I just want to make sure that this is going to work just right. Okay, put that on so it comes up flush. Now put these on an angle just to keep them out of your way. Okay, now we're going to flush that up. But that's why I didn't plane the top beforehand. Yeah, and that gives you your springs with that much of the rod sticking out. The springs will push it back so you've got an inch and five eighths, which is probably more than you'll ever need. Works nice and smooth. And that's sitting down below. Now, plane that off. It's going to go on this way. You should be able to just draw this. Find the center. down from the top, find the center, there, all right, repeat that on the other side. This is going to fit. This stuff really stretches when you put it under the clamp. So get yourselves a moxing kit. A good dovetail saw. Maybe a haircut. And you'll be all ready to cut dovetails. Nice and solid, beautiful. Enjoy it. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.